Okay, we're going to continue with the previous example that we had started working with in the uh, opening presentation for Sonnet Light. Let's open up our double stub tuner example again. I can click on the Edit Project button and it remembers what the last project was or the last four projects we'd worked on. I'll open up the stub tuner example that we had worked with previously. Let's work on changing the spacing between the stubs and also controlling the lengths of the stubs. It would be nice to have a family of curves so that we can see what happens as we vary the geometry. And to do this automatically with Sonnet Light, you can take advantage of what we call parameters. Under the Tools menu, you'll find Dimension Parameters and an option of three different parameter types that you can use. An anchored parameter, a symmetric parameter, or a radial parameter. An anchored parameter will be appropriate for controlling the lengths of the stub. So let's go ahead and enter the Add Anchored Parameter mode. Watch carefully on the Status menu or the Status uh, section of the window at the bottom. It's going to tell you what you should be doing next in order to install a parameter. First, we're going to click our mouse on a vertex of one of these polygons to be our anchor point for the parameter. This point will not move, but other points will be moved relative to this point. I click to place it. And now I'm told to click my mouse to specify a reference point. This will be our reference point. And then I'll also select points that move with the reference point. And when I'm finished, I press Enter to complete the selection. The window that comes up now asks me for a name for this parameter. I'm going to call this L stub. and I place the enunciator down and you can see 200 mils is the length of the stub. I'll repeat the process for the other stub. Anchor point, reference point, points to move with it. Enter. And now since we already have a variable with a value of 200 it locates that and allows me to just link this parameter to that one. So now we have one parameter that controls the length of both stubs. One more parameter that we'd like to add would be to control the spacing between the stubs. To do this, we'll use the symmetric parameter. Symmetric parameters have an anchor point that's implied in the middle between groups of points that you're moving back and forth. So in this case, we're going to start with our first reference point for this stub right here at this location, and then select all of the points that will move with that side, and press Enter to finish. And the reference point for the other group will be this point of this stub. And I'll select all of the points to move with that. Press Enter to finish. And I'll create a parameter called L spacing. L spacing is 215 mils. Now, what happens if we change it? Let's just check moving our geometry around a bit. What if I, what if I change it to 115 mils? Well, as you can see here, the stubs have grown closer together, but one thing that would trouble me a little bit about this is that I would have an extra bit of line length in the input and output lines that would be included in the results that I might not like to have. So what I'd really like is for my reference planes to be linked with the outside edges of the stubs. We can do that in Sonnet. Go to Reference Plane, Cal Length. And instead of the fixed reference plane like we used before, select the linked reference plane and then go to the mouse pick mode. And now you can mouse over vertices that exist in the problem where you can link your reference plane and have it shift with. So I'll select this point and now you can see the arrow is turned into a white filled arrow. That indicates a linked reference plane and it will shift as this particular point moves in the geometry. Let's do the same thing for the right side. Okay, and now we have linked reference planes. If I change my parameter back to 215 again, you can see the reference planes shifted with the location of that first discontinuity. Let's save our project. I'll stub tuner param. Now I'd like to analyze this and get some, some sweeps of data a family of curves that I can work with. Well, let's go to the Analysis Setup menu and we'll shift gears a little bit here. We'll turn off Compute Current Density and we'll use what's called Parameter Sweep Analysis. And here you can see our two parameters that we could vary. 
Sonnet Light will only let us sweep one at a time. So let's look at changing our spacing. Let's start with 115 to 215 and we'll go in steps of 25. So we'll take basically five positions of the spacings between the stubs. This is going to perform an analysis from 1 to 10 gigahertz at every one of these combinations automatically. I select OK. And I could add additional parameter sweep definitions, but Sonnet Light will only allow us to use one. Any of the other Sonnet Suites would let you use two or more definitions in the parameter sweep uh, menu here. I'll select OK to complete our analysis setup. And we'll save the file. And now we're ready to analyze. So when I tell it to go ahead and analyze, I'll press the EM button. The EM status monitor will come up and you'll see different parameter combinations are actually taking off in this analysis. The first group of parameters is already completed, actually two now. And when we're finished, we'll have five complete sweeps. Okay, the analysis is completed. Each of those five positions of the spacing have been computed and sweeps have been provided for each. Let's take a look at the data. I select View Response. And we have the data loaded here for one of those values of the parameter. It looks like it was for L spacing of 215. I'd like to see them all. So let's take a look at more of them. If I right click on the uh, legend item and edit the curve group, you can see here that the combinations that are currently in the plot appear in this window below. If I check the box to graph all iterations and click OK, it should show me all of them. Now you can see what's happened as we've changed the spacing between those two between those two stubs. Let's try attaching a couple of curve markers to help us see which is which. Same thing also for S11. So that's very interesting. We can see how this uh, has changed. And, uh, of course, if we were to change the stub lengths, we would, of course, see a shifting in the frequency response. Let's say I'd like to output the data from one of these positions to a file. So I could take the S-parameter models from the Sonnet simulation and use them in some other part of a design that I'm doing. I select Output, SYZ parameter file, and the output window appears. Several formats are available. I also can save it as S, Y, or Z parameter data, and of course uh, the different formats are available. I can select a combination. Let's say I was interested in the uh, separation of 190 mils, and when I select OK, that's the data that will appear. And when I click Save, that is the uh, actual combination that would then be saved in the file. If perhaps I wanted to save all of the different positions in a single or rather into, into a group of S-parameter data files, I could select all combinations and each of them will be put into a separate S2P file. I click Save and then in a directory, a subdirectory, which has the same name as the project, you can see here we have a series of S2P files and then an explanation text file is also provided here. So we've taken a Sonnet Light project, a double stub tuner, swept out different par parametric combinations of the spacing between the stubs, viewed the data, and exported the data to separate data files for use in uh, other design tools.